Good morning, I'm Delusion Dispeller. Welcome to Read and Grow with me. And I left off on Matthew chapter 12. I believe I went all the way to the end, or at least almost to the end. So I'm going to start Matthew 13. But since these are parables, I'm going to do two parables today. And a couple of them on the next video. So today we're doing the parable of the sower. And the parable of the weeds. And as I always do, and I read through these things, I'm going to share a commentary of my own as I go as to how this applies to online activity, people in your life, etc. So here we go. The parable of the sower. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered, because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you, what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitfully, unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. That was the parable of the sower. Now this one is the parable of the weeds, and then I'm going to stop and go back and give my commentary. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed to, in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters. First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Okay, let's talk about this now. We'll go back to the parable of the sower. There's several different things that are said here. The first part is, First of all, we know so a seed, sorry, was sown, and they fell in different places. The seeds. When you, if you've ever gardened and you throw seeds out among the soil, you know that some blow away, some end up in good soil, others end up in the hard mud that the <coughs> sun has beaten down on and 
destroyed, essentially. No minerals, no vitamins, unless you go way, way down deep into the earth. Which, if you're handling seeds, they're only going to land on the top of where you put them. Or if you dig a little bit of dirt and sow them, you know, shallowly in the ground, some of them may grow, some don't. That's just the way gardening goes. Okay, so this is a sower, person planting seeds. May as well call it the parable of the planter. All right, well, we plant seeds in people. We plant seeds of words. We plant seeds of ideas, different types of seeds. So think about your life this way as this parable that we just read. So we have some falling in, let's see. Some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. So that happens. Sometimes you have plans and hopes and dreams and the birds come and eat your plans. It doesn't happen. Things that you wanted and hoped for and dreamed of don't happen. There's the birds eating them up. The birds of life, you might say. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. So there wasn't much holding it down. There wasn't much rooting those seeds down. So it came up, the seed grew, but there wasn't much to keep it in the ground. So it just sprung up real quick and the sun beat down on it and it just withered away. It just, you get these plans, you're like, oh, I want to go do this. I'm going to do it. Like for instance, my Bible reading, okay? There's an example of something falling on rocky places. I have every good intention of getting caught up in my Bible reading on my videos, and I, I really do. I, I got a list made. It's on the list. But rocky places happen, you know. Um, I ended up with the colonoscopy, and people were sick, and I was working, and whatever. And, yeah, so it never happened. The rocky places just gobbled up all of my plans for a while till I got back to putting it into the good soil which is doing it first before anything else. All right. Um, it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. So, yeah, so rocky soil, little bit of dirt there. So the intention was there with the dirt, but rocks were in the way, so it didn't happen. But now, and then the sun came out, so more heat more friction, more tension came into my life. And yeah, well, that didn't happen for a long time. It's been probably, I would say, close to a month since my last video. All right. Um, other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Um, I liken this to the video people on here. A lot of them were going strong for a long time, usually started from the whole Chris Watts trial. Um, but then the thorns sprung up and choked them out. The, the haters, the bad people, the trolls came. They're the thorns. And they came and choked out the message. And instead of continuing to go forth, getting rid of the thorns, chopping down the thorns, the people just withered. You don't see a lot of those people on here anymore. Same thing in your life. You have friends. You have friendships. You have relationships. But sometimes thorns get in there. Resentments get in there. Anger at each other. Um, differences of opinion. Stress. Tension. Other people come in and start gossip and slander and whatever. And those friendships just are choked out by those thorns. Those negativities. There you go. There's another example. Um, so that plant didn't grow. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, thirty, six, or sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Plant your seeds, your words, your efforts, your energies, your intentions into good soil. That means if you have a plan, put in place something to back up that plan. So instead of me just writing it down and saying, oh yeah, I'm going to do Matthew chapter 13 on this day, and then that day comes, but oh, I got sick and I couldn't do it. I didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like doing anything but laying in bed. Or, oh, I got to go to work now, so I don't have time now. Well, work's done. It's after work, but uh-oh, 
got to spend time with the husband. Not that that's a bad thing. But you got to plan everything strategically. If you really want to do something, there comes a day when there's nothing to do and you're going to start trying to fill in those hours with things. And that's the day that you should have done your video that you wanted to do. Or go and visit that person you said you were going to visit. Before anything else even creeps into your mind, you put that good soil there. Yes, you should have an intention, but you should also have a way to get there. So how do you do that? Well, just like I did. Um, I cleaned a little bit this morning. I grabbed my Bible and I said, okay, I'm doing this. I sat down and here I am doing it. It's just your choices in life. That's how you plant your seeds. You have a friendship that you want to start with somebody, you reach out to them. Don't wait for them to come to you. Nowadays, it's really hard to be in relationships with people because it feels very one-sided a lot of times. But sometimes that's the way it has to be. Maybe the other person is shyer than you are. Maybe they've been hurt more than you have. Maybe they don't know how to process some of the things they've been through. And they're a good person, but you just don't know how to reach out to them. Reach out to them and tell them, hey, I didn't really know how to, you know, contact you or if I'd even be received, but how would you like to go out to lunch today? Whatever. you got to be the giver. You can't always be the taker and wait around for people to come to you. That's not realistic in life, especially nowadays where everybody's afraid of everyone. You need to be the one to reach out. All right. Um... Let's see. And they were asking Jesus, you know, why? Why are you talking in these riddles? Why are you telling us stories? Why don't you just spit it out? And he said, though seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear or understand. Basically, I tried to do it the easy way with you guys. I tried to just give it to you straight, but you're not getting it. Some people don't get it. Sometimes you have to make things fun. I know in my job, a lot of times the kids aren't really understanding the work, the English or the math. So I make it fun for them. I tell little stories. I make little acronyms, little word pictures, whatever. I did it for my own children when I was teaching them. Make things enjoyable for people. I mean, yes, work has to be done, but make it a fun thing. Even when we did chores with my children, I would pick stuff out of a hat and then dance around with the dust mop and, you know... Life is too short to be all drudgery about everything and making everything so negative and dark. Of course, people aren't going to want to do things if everything is just a big chore. Don't be a Debbie Downer all the time with your friends either. Don't let every contact you have with people be you telling your problems to them. Sometimes listen to their problems. Sometimes don't talk about problems at all. Just go out to lunch and eat the biggest burger you can eat. You know, or... Get the nicest vegetarian salad that you can eat and talk about all the wonderful vegetables on there and talk about some of the things you've made. Make life fun because if it's not fun, you're not going to enjoy life. I think that's, you know, people say, well, suicide, it's caused by alcoholism or addiction or loneliness or whatever. You know what I think suicide is caused by? One of the main things is that life is boring. That person's life is boring. Yes, it's lonely. It doesn't have enough substance of enjoyment to it. You can make your own fun, but people don't take time to figure out how to make things enjoyable and creative and interesting and entertaining. That's what I think people that are suicidal lack, is some good, healthy friends that know how to laugh and have a good time. Just my thought on it anyways. All right, the parable of the weeds. Basically what they're saying is, okay, there's these bad dudes coming in and they're messing with us. You want us to get rid of them, Jesus? You want us to take them out? You want us to send them away? He says, nope, let everybody come together in the right time. I'll sift out all the bad guys. But if you sift out the bad guys, some of the good ones might go with them. You know, it's like that in life, actually. If you have a group of people... And there's the bad guys causing the problems. Those bad guys might be convincing enough to get some of the decent people to come with them and join their ranks. Again, we see this online. We see it in person, in gangs. There may be a really decent person. In fact, okay, I was that person. In the narcissistic relationship with my former mentor, I always bring that up because that's really the turning point, the defining moment in my life. I was that good person. I was the preacher girl on Pale Talk. 
I was the one everybody looked up to and came to to hear the word of God being preached. This lady found me. She was the bad guy. She was the weed. But she managed <coughs> to deceive me into joining her ranks. Now, I could have just, like, sat there and waited for, you know, somebody else to come along and just snatch her up and deal with her. And instead, I didn't. I got deceived, and I went along with her. And eventually, God talked to me and got me out of that situation. But if he had just come down and yanked her out of my life at that time, I wouldn't be here talking to you, for one thing. Because it was the very stuff she put me through that caused me to make my very first videotape and start talking to people about narcissistic personality disorder and abuse in relationships. If God had yanked her out of my life and gotten rid of her, even though at times I prayed, you know, remove her from me, and it was something I had to finally make the decision and say, okay, whatever God's trying to do in me, it's done, and I can stand on my own now. I don't need this person. But at the time, I needed that weed in my life. I needed to walk away with that weed. I needed to, and I'm not talking about marijuana, y'all, so don't think I'm talking about weed, weed. Although, <laughs> if you look at marijuana as a negative thing, I guess you could see her as a marijuana weed. Um, but the point was, I needed to be together with that negativity to see the sharp contrast between good <clears throat> versus evil, acceptance versus rejection. I needed to feel what it felt like to be on the other side of the rejection. What it felt like to be the person that was persecuted, the person that was put down and mocked and scorned. I needed to walk in those shoes with that weed right next to me before God could finally pluck the weed out and say, okay, you're all right now. You've got a backbone. You've got somewhere to stand. You don't need this weed anymore to fight against to grow because you've grown past the weed and now the weeds way down here we don't need it we're plucking it out it's useless to you you'll find friendships like that where there are just weeds and tears in your life some of them you can avoid some of them there is no avoiding and that's because there's something you're supposed to learn from that weed and in due season that weed will be plucked up out of your life and you'll find yourself standing stronger than ever I hope this meant something to somebody. It meant something to me. I was kind of preaching to myself today. Anyway, tune in the next time when I am reading from Matthew 13. We'll carry on with the next parables and talk about how that applies to your life. God bless you, everybody. Have a happy Resurrection Day, Easter, whatever you celebrate, and we'll see you next time.